Good morning, good morning, good afternoon. I'm up washing dishes. And just got finished listening to one of my Christian brothers on YouTube. I shared his channel out uh, on my community tab. I'm seeing if they look for this straw cleaner. Um, he always resonated with me ever since I seen him, how I started following him is because he has a garden. Garden. The garden. Mm. The garden is in the Bible. Bearing fruit, planting seeds, harvesting your blessings. My God. No, this video is not about him, but shout out to him. Um, because something resonated that he said in his video today that I shared. He said, God is here. Yes, God is here. God is here. God is all around us. God is here. The Holy Spirit of God is within us. But I wanted to share something with y'all. You know we're talking about narcissist personality disorder and toxicity relationships and marriages. And all these mental disorders that are spiritually demons. They're demons. They're names of demons. Sorry, y'all had some uh, drinking my coffee. And I also was eating an apple cinnamon fruit and grain cereal bar. I'm not cleaning up my kitchen. <sighs> Let me tell y'all some. Being married to a narcissist, I'm gonna tell y'all something that happened. The enemy will try to keep you from church. The enemy will try to keep you from the word of God. The enemy don't want you speaking about God, talking about God, ministering about God, bringing other believers or people who have, uh, what's the word? Uh, questions about God or insecure about things that we want to know more about God. And it's going to come a time in your life, even a loved one will do this to you. They will do something where, or they will try to move you away from God even if it is trying to get to church and this is how I knew that this was demonic you gotta stop looking at the person so what happened was it was on a weekend okay and it was a Saturday I had babysat my great nephew. So, my sister and my niece, I don't mind babysitting because y'all are, I'm not into all of that no more. Going out and all of that. <clears throat> I don't have my time. That ain't, you know, that ain't what I'm on. So, I don't mind watching my nieces or my nephew, my great nephews, so they can go out and enjoy themselves. I get it. But neither here nor there. My uh, great nephew had stayed the night, so the next day was Saturday. Mind you, I told y'all I get out on Saturdays and shop. I had started making this a thing, okay? Making this a thing where I get out and shop on Saturday. So here comes Saturday. Here we go with this car issue again. It's always something wrong with the car when it's time for me to use the car. 
So we go to, hold on, y'all wiping my counter off. So we go to the tire shop. Is this plant in the way? It looks like it is. <laughs> this plant is growing in water, y'all. Do you see that? Oop, I touched it. You see this leaf right here growing out? And it's just sitting in water, some cut cuttings from a white knight. So, we go to the tire shop because my nart demon, and that's the word I'm gonna be using because this is a spiritual warfare. It ain't the person. It ain't the it ain't the flesh. It's what's inside of them spiritually that you're battling and fighting. So, my narc demon, we go to the tire place up the street from us to get the tire changed. We're trying to get an oil change. The guy told him, you know, I'm about to get ready to close because on Saturday they close early. He said, I'm about to get ready and close. So he said, I can top you off, but you're going to have to come back Monday to get your oil changed because I can't do it. He said, I got one more person. Let me move this over because I'm rinsing. I got my dishes. Let me show y'all how I got this. I wash and then I rinse like this due to my sink messed up. So, um, <clears throat> he was like, I could top you off, but. I can't do your oil change. He said, and I can check your tire out for you. So he did all of that. So me and my nephew, we got up, my great nephew, we got out the car and sat on the bench. When I sat on the bench, guess who I sat to next to? I sat next to a pastor who got his own church in the next town by me. So I'm a people person. I know how to chime in on conversations when it's necessary. So I hear him and one of his members, it's an elder lady there. Nice woman, dressed nice. You know them elder people, they gonna, they stay up, baby. She dressed nice. And they just chiming and talking, talking about church, talking about things, members in the church. Not in a bad way, in a good way. And... I chimed in. I said, I didn't know he was a pastor. Because he young and he was dressed like, you know, he ain't at church. So he got on regular clothes, t-shirt and, you know, how they wear their gym shorts, slides and socks, stuff like that. So I said, what church y'all attend? He said, he said, oh, my church. No, he said. I preach at such and such such and then I said oh you a pastor like that and he was like yes I said oh I'm a minister like that and he said what church you what church you preach at I said I minister through social media and motivate and encourage other people that way and he said oh okay like that I, said, I use my social media platforms as my ministry and he was like oh okay then he was like, I want to invite you to come to my church. And he was like, bring little man with you. We got a children's ministry. Now, y'all know I started a children's ministry in my family with my nieces and nephews. So, I was like, oh, okay. He was like, come tomorrow, first Sunday. So, at the time, my phone was off. But I had my phone on me. And he was like, I'm finna, he was like, give me your number. Mind you, my nart demon watching me the whole time. So I said, no. I said, just let me screenshot the, um, because we was out to handle business. My phone was finna get back on, but I need to handle business first. So, um, I was like, no, let me just screenshot your, fly, your flyer, because it was a flyer of him and his wife and, uh, the information of the church. And when he open, he don't be open every Saturday. He be open the first, the first and the third Sunday, I think. And then some, another, one more day uh, to do something. I forget. I forgot. So, 
he was telling me where the church was at when I he would ask me and I was like, okay. He was telling me how to get there. I go in that next town to shop all the time. So passing by that way, I knew exactly where that church was at. So I'm like, okay, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. So my dark demon was off that weekend. And I'm like, hey, what time do you have to be to work tomorrow? Because the dark demon goes to work at 2 o'clock in the evening. The service was at 11. I don't care if I can get an hour and 30 minutes in church. That would have been enough for me. 15 minutes would have been enough for me. So, knowing this dark demon, knowing he know what time he had to be to work. This demon inside of him says, I don't know. My job going to call me and let me know what time to come in. You on a schedule, but yet on a Sunday. And Sundays are days that I know. Sundays are the days that I know the Pacific time that he has to be at work. His Sunday times never change. Really, none of his times never change. The dark demons has always lied to leave early to be with somebody else or do whatever the, he was doing. So I was like, I said, before all of that, I asked him, I said, yeah. So I was like, yeah, because I said, you see that guy I was sitting next to? I said, that's a pastor. He got his own church. I said, he's young. His wife look older than him, but you could tell he young. And I was like, I want, I said, I've been looking for a church ever since I've been down here. And I said, God, I just been waiting on God to just lead me to the right church. I said, I'm not for the visit churches because normally that's the routine how you would do. You would just pick churches, you know, of your religion and you would just go visit them. And then if it resonates with you spiritually, you possibly would join that church. So I, that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, I said, I've been down here four years. And all I've been wanting to do is get back in church. But I've been wanting to get into a church that resonates with me. Okay. So, he was like, I, he said, I don't know. They got to call and let me know. The narc demon said, I don't know. My job going to call me and let me know what time to be to work. I said, your job going to call you and let you know what time you're going to be to work. He was like, yeah, I don't know what time I got to be there. After I told this person that I wanted to go to church. I said, well, normally you don't have to be to 12 and you be leaving the house by 1. I said, the church started at 11. I said, I could leave like 12, 12, 30 because the town is 30 minutes away. So he still would make it to work on time if I would have went to church. So, he never knew what time he went to work. So, that was to keep me from going to church. Mind you, we only have one car. His car, which is in my name. And insurance in my name. But yet, when I want to go to church, this narc demon tells me, Basically, you ain't going to church because I don't know what time I got to be to work. Before that, I was excited. I was telling my daughter, I said, find your um, because my daughter had a dress she hadn't worn. And I had ordered some stuff that came in. So we both had something new and something nice to wear to church for first Sunday. I told my daughter, I said, get your stuff ready because we're going to um, church in the morning. We're going to go visit this church in the morning. My daughter was excited. I was excited. And I said, we're going to bring Hayden because I said, my ass is mom. Can he go? 
the church with us tomorrow and um I'll be flashing back y'all <laughs> y'all have no idea all the stuff that I have endured and went through for these 15 years so I said I'm gonna ask his mom can he go to church with us tomorrow because they have a children's church and he said okay you know we're getting prepared getting ready for tomorrow for church because I'm still waiting on to see, you know, <clears throat> if the people, you know, the people ain't for to call you early in the morning. They gonna call you that day to let you know when to be there tomorrow. In this case, you one of them people that's on call, have a job that's on call, and they dare. <coughs> I mean, hey, you on call, <coughs> and they call you at any time. But this, this ain't the type of job that he has. He has a set schedule. But yeah, he alters and lies like I'm a fool. So later on that evening, I'm like, you still ain't got a call? Nope, 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 nope. It's getting late. The day about to end. It's nighttime. Still ain't got a call. Still ain't got a call. Here go morning. Still ain't got a call. Still ain't got a call. You leave. This narc demon leaves at one something. To be to work at 2 o'clock. And I'm sitting there looking like. I could. We could have went to church. This narc demon. Played. On my beliefs. On my religion as a Christian. Played on my emotion. As empathy. Empath. Somebody said, empathy is a weakness. Weakness is vulner vulnerability. We tend to let our guards down when we are in love with somebody that we feel is for us. But I knew this narc demon wasn't for me long time ago. Keep in mind... I dealt with this to keep a roof over me and my children's head because I don't have any income. Okay. And if you didn't know, I'm waiting on my disability. Like it's a long it's a long process that I'm going through. A five year long process. Five years of disability waiting for me. So, you know, they're going to take their time because they don't want to give me them five years of that money, spiritually speaking. But it's mine and it's guaranteed for me and I'm going to get it. Because I have all the doctor documentations. I have all the paperwork. And you're probably saying, Crystal, why you didn't never sign for disability when you were diagnosed with cancer? Because I had faith that I was going to be healed. I had faith mentally in my mind that I was going back to work in the work field. I've seen it been done with people that are close to my mom. People that I, I've worked with, managers that I've worked with had cancer. They went breast cancer. They went right back to work. We both in the same field. We both worked together. We both experienced cancer. We both got, you know, in remission. And I've seen these people go back to work. But I was mentally strong. Physically, my body wasn't strong to work. So, therefore, that's why I can't work. Okay? Physically on somebody's job. Because of all the disabilities that I have internally. I've tried to go back to work, even got a job, went back in the same field, went there, my body. The lady said, come in. I explained everything to the lady. She knew my conditions and everything. So she was like, come in on the weekend and um, I'm going to train you on the weekend. Went in there. 
walk through the property familiar familiarizing myself with the property the property was huge but it wasn't hard for me to know where to go what to do and all of that because that's my profession in hospitality so i know these things it's just a different property went in on a did i go on a saturday or a sunday i think i came in on a sunday Monday, my paperwork was going to be final. But the money that they was suggesting to pay me, I was negotiating. That wasn't enough for me. So the manager was out on the... The manager was gone away that weekend. So that Monday, I was going to come back and come into the office and negotiate my pay. That Sunday, I left. My body was in excruciating pain. I did the full shift down to the last housekeeper there. When I say my body was in excruciating pain because I haven't had any therapy with exercise and building my muscles back up, stretching, um nerve damage therapy things like that I, my physically i haven't had physical therapy on my body to get back in shape in order to do that that's why when it said when you it says when you in remission you need to heal and that's why i moved out here where i'm at i moved to a smaller town out of the city where it's more quiet less people and I can heal and work on myself and be less stressful. But yet, a narc demon was with me along the way and made it even worse. But I'm letting you know why I don't work and why I stayed in this narc demon marriage for so long because of finance. I was the head of household throughout my marriage up until 2017. After 2017, I was not because I was not able to work. That's when my illness start started in 2017. Symptoms and stuff start. But 20, no, take that back. I had about one more year. 2018, that's when symptoms of my uh, cancer started. So, be mindful when you are looking at people and judging them and saying, well, why did you stay in this abusive relationship for so long? Or why did you, just why did you stay? You questioning why, 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 why? You don't know, like I told y'all in the episode one or episode two I mentioned, and I think I'm going to be mentioning that in every episode simply because it is the truth and people don't understand the psychological psychological mental effect it has on someone mentally however it can be financially as well like i was telling y'all about my problem i had no financial resources it was even time where this man left me last year with bills over a thousand dollars no income and my baby boy son dad had to step in and pay my bills because this man abandoned us yet spiritually i know them two they didn't tell me anything but i believe i know this for a fact because i've talked to both of them and both of them said that they seen each other so therefore some words must have been said and my narc demon I don't know what he said to my son's father, but he said something. Something had to transpire because this man stopped sending me the money. He paid it for six months. He stopped sending it last year. He sent me $1,000 every month. No problem. But eventually, we started having a problem when he started running into town. Not where I live at, but where I'm from. 
they start running into each other and then it became an issue something became an issue so that finance stopped that narc demon stopped that last resource was my mom if i didn't have my mom to finish me out those other six months me and my kids probably would have been living in a shelter or i probably would have let my kids stay with somebody else and i would have went and left it lived in a shelter or lived in my car because i even said it i said i'll let my kids stay with a family member and i would live in my car at that time i did i did have my car my car my chrysler was working the only reason why my Chrysler went out because I was depressed and I was letting my son drive it around. And he's new to driving. He don't know nothing about no oil change and that. So my motor locked up. So it's a lot of things that takes place that people don't understand. My mom finished me out those six months and another six months. She did a year. A year passed. Guess who's back? The narc demon comes back after he seen I took a Florida trip. We took a Florida trip and went to the beach. get back from the trip soon as I walk in the house from the trip bringing my bags in the narc demon facetimes me I got bags all on me I look I said what this narc demon says you told me to call you when I'm serious and I'm ready to talk mind you I'm a YouTuber so they watch you. If you're on social media, they're watching you. I'm pretty sure you probably have blocked them. If you have those type of narc demons that say bad things to you or harassing you, you'll block them. But yet, mine is a watcher. He's not a, com a commenter because he don't want nobody to know who he really is. But I know. So I put my bags down. Answer the FaceTime. This narc demon is sitting on a couch. A window is behind him. And it's dark in the house. But you could tell it's daylight outside. So it's a little light coming from that window where I can see his face. But it's also dark in that house to where he has on a lamp. And I said, hey, Narc Demon. I didn't say Narc Demon. I said his name. And I said, can I help you? And he said, you told me to call you when I'm serious and ready to talk. I said, yeah, I did. I said, but I'm just getting in from out of town. I can't talk to you right now. He's still saying something. I don't know what he was saying. As he's talking, I'm tuning it out after I said what I said. I heard the part where he said, you told me to call you if when I'm serious and ready to talk. The rest, I tuned out because I was looking at his atmosphere behind him. Like I said, it was dark in there. He had on a lamp. He's sitting on the couch like this he had that phone propped up on something so i can see him sitting on the couch and the little light coming from that window that's sitting beside him behind him and in my head i said this is some freaky shit i mean like freak out not freaky sexually freaked out demonic <clears throat> So I said, you're going to have to call me back because I'm really struggling getting in and bringing bags. I had them many bags on me. You know how it is when you bring stuff in the house from traveling? And I said, you're going to have to call me back another time. I can't talk to you right now. I hang up that phone. I go back outside. I told my, uh, because my mom and my 
baby sister, they followed us. I think some, one of, who was in the car with them? I don't know if one of my children rode with them to be more comfortable, and that's why they followed us. But I forget why my sister and my mom followed us to the house where they had to get some. I think one of the children rode with them, my daughter or somebody. Yeah, my daughter. My daughter and my son did because after we left the trip, my sister and my mom, they took my kids. They stayed in Florida, and they went They went somewhere else. They went to go do some more fun stuff um, around that time. So they got back to uh, where I live yet a little bit later, but still wasn't that very much long. They just went to run by another place while we headed back. But we ended up getting back to my home at the same time because my brother ended up having a flat tire and we had to stop in um, Savannah. Did we stop in Savannah? That Austin. That's what we had to stop at. So, yeah. I get off the phone. I go back outside. I'm, I'm talking to my mom and my baby sister. And I said, y'all won't believe who just called me. Who just FaceTimed me. And I'm telling them how the scene was. I said, it was demonic. So, from that part, that was his way of working himself back into my life. From last year up until now of September of this year. September the 18th. September the 18th. September. Let me see. August, September, October. It's November. Yeah. September the 18th. He was not himself. He was worse than he was last year. He was doing things that he didn't even care. He came more disrespectful, did not care. And it was out in the open for me to see, for the children to see. Lying, saying he working overtime, one coming home. It's it just so much. If you are, I've been on here 32 minutes and I ain't going to edit none of this out. If you are in an abusive relationship or a narcissist relationship or marriage, get out. Get out of that situation. I cannot stress it enough. I have been so happy since this demon has been away from me. I have been happy. I have peace. I can breathe. I have not had no anxiety attacks. Yeah, I had some from the trauma bond when he first left because I was in shock. Like, wow, this shit really happened again. Like, he really, he really did it again. Just went to work, left, and never came back. Get out, sis. Get out, bro. Don't take these people back. It's never going to work. It's never going to work. In your mind, you thinking you can manipulate them to do things, to make them happy, to keep them there. And they know that. They know that you're trying to go over and beyond to make it work. That's why they keep discarding you, abandoning you, gaslighting you, manipulating you. It's a game and you're stuck in the cycle if you're still with this person. That doesn't mean you don't love them. You can love their ass from a distance. But that also means that you don't have to put up with them and you know your self-worth. You love and respect yourself enough not to allow that to happen to you. It's a warfare. And I'm woke. And I know what demons it is. And the more the more that I research, I continue to find more. 
do you know you can have more than one, more than four demons attached on you spiritually? And as I'm studying, things about witchcraft not studying it to use it on somebody studying it so i know how to cast it out as i've talked to y'all and told y'all it's not so much that people or minister pastor evangelists deacons or whoever up under these title names will tell you how to deliver yourself from evil or how to cast out demons from someone else. Okay. That information is not in the Bible. Read your Bible. It is things in the Bible talking about Jesus casting out demons. But how? Do you know the Greek terminology? Do you know about witchcraft? Do you know about voodoo? Do you know about warlocks? This shit is real. And it's been real. Look at cannibals. Cannibals. People eating people. Look at all these people demising their children. Putting their grandmothers in storage bins, suitcases, killing them, chopping them up. Racism, people being hanged, people being rolled up in mats at basketball games, demise, people being kidnapped from their jobs and getting demise and shot up. People allowing other people's children to come over their house and sexually assault them. Or allow other people's children to come over their house and then they demise their children, themselves, and their wife and kids or girlfriend and kids. I can go on and on and on and on and on. You're not going to understand it until it happens to you. You're not going to understand it unless in case you deep down in that Bible. If you learning spiritually in the Bible, you better also learn deliverance. Yeah, people say witchcraft, voodoo, and all this is sin. It is sin. But if you don't know about that sin as well as you know about that Bible, how can you cast out these things? We know casting things out in Jesus' name. But in order to cast out demons in Jesus' name, you have to know the demon's name. Not flesh, not your husband's name, flesh name. Not your wife flesh name. The spirit demonic demon diamond domino derivative. The demonic spirit inside of them. You have to know that name. Oh, and they have names. In Greek. But do you understand Greek? Do you know how to read Greek? Do you know how to say Greek words? It 
it goes all the way back to Haiti. Haitians. The voodoo land in Haiti. Yeah, did you know it's an actual town that is dedicated in Haiti to voodoo and witchcraft? Drugs being sold coming from Mexico into our world, into our, well, into our states. Fitting out, getting here into our states, getting into the hands of our children. Drugs getting into our children's hand, demising our children. Did you hear about the fentanyl that they found in Florida? It was so much on that bus that they retrieved and arrested three cartels, a dad, his son, and one more person because they brought so much fentanyl from Mexico into Florida that can wipe out every child in Florida. It's on the news. You think that's not demonic? It's not spiritual? Tarot cards readers tell you a little bit of the truth but also mix in lies to cause confusion. You got to educate yourself on this stuff. You just can't say God said yoga is sin. God said voodoo is sin. God said witchcraft is sin. God said terror. Everything God said is sin if that is not of God. That's everything. Knowing and unknowingly. But does that mean you're not going to educate yourself on it so you know how to handle yourself as a Christian? No. You're going to educate yourself. I'm going to educate myself on witchcraft, voodoo, warlocks, witches, tarot readings. How can you cast out these things if you're not knowledgeable what these things are? You can't. That's because... And that's why you have so many attacks. The more it happened to you, the more you wanna, you're going to want to know about it and how to cast it out. It's deep. And I'm woke. And when you know you woke and you know what those demons are and you know their name and you know how to cast them out, they will flee. They will flee from you. They will flee from you. In Jesus' name, they will flee from you. It's real out here. Some people may say, oh, she crazy. Oh, you crazy. Oh, he crazy. Oh, they crazy. No, nah, they ain't crazy. They woke. And they know something that you don't know. And people try to tell you. They try to preach the word. Try to minister. Don't give up. Because when you give up and you move away from that word and you stop. Just because I don't record everything that I used to do on YouTube. That don't mean I ain't in my word. That just mean I'm out here studying behind the scenes. There's some things that I can't say on camera. I've said things like in my last episode too. I see how YouTube mess or spiritually mess with that video. You can barely hear any or everything that I said in there. But the people that was in there, they heard it loud and clear. They heard what I said loud and clear. The sound was good, loud and clear. But the replay wasn't. There are going to be things that you're going to hear. And there are going to be things that are going to be stopped where you cannot hear. It can be demonic. 
where that demon or Satan don't want you to hear the word. Or it can be God is stopping it for where you can't hear it. But I'm like, I already know what it is because I'm like, the sound and everything was good. I don't buy new headsets, got a new camera, everything working good. Why is the playback wishy-washy like that going in and out? You can hear certain things and certain things you can't. And I've also seen where YouTube block certain words out. That ain't going to stop me from delivering the word. Stay prayed up. Stay in the word. Learn about deliverance. Ask God to keep you covered by the blood of Jesus as you going through your spiritual walk and your spiritual journey, whether it's in your ministry or something individually that you're doing. Knowledge is power. Knowledge will always be power. And the enemy does not like knowledgeable people, period. Whether you're a Christian or not. The enemy does not want you to be smarter than them. Because if you're unknowledgeable, that's how he can play on you. Play on your mentality. So I pray that this live resonates with who it is for. Everything that I say in here is the truth. And I'm sharing my testimony. I'm not afraid. I am going to continue to share them and to continue to speak the word of God and bring you things that I know of. And I've actually seen the demonic spirits flee. also going to talk about some supernatural things that have happened that I've seen that other people in my family have experienced and know exactly what I'm talking about when God lead me to tell that I'm going to tell it more of this story is God is real God is here God is with you you are never alone he is always near No one can stop you from believing in God. I always find myself back to Christ. Wake up. Get up out that cycle. Leave that man or that woman that's a narc demon where they reside and your life will be a little bit better. However, the farther you get in your ministry or the farther you get into your knowledge about the word of God biblically, there will be new demons. There will be more attacks. But you got to stay strong in the faith of God and don't allow that to deter or run you away from what you know is right from what you know is right and what you know is of God and what is not of God so I've been on here 49 minutes and count almost 50 minutes I almost did an hour um to get off here because my daughter is texting me about some dang on chicken wings. I don't know, child. But this is your girl, Crystal. Simply Beauty Minister with Crystal. I'm all of the above. In my stocking cap and all, bringing you the word, washing dishes.
from my kitchen down into my dining room, sitting down, having a chat. See, my shirt say real. Because that's me. I'm going to bring it to you real and raw. I ain't got to dress up and look a certain way to deliver what is the truth. I'm supposed to be listening to what's coming out of my mouth. Not what you think I should be looking like. Putting on fake stuff. The world got y'all screwed up out here. You're being too fake and you need to learn how to be real with yourself. Love yourself. Respect yourself. I can go on and on and on. But this is episode three. And... I'll see y'all in episode four. Stay woke. Peace.